Welcome back, friends. We're going to start layer two. Before we do that, though, I wanted to um, just kind of show you a close up of some of these interesting color variations that we got. Yes, we were a team. You were here for it. Unless you didn't watch that one, in which case, um, you weren't here for it. So then this isn't yours. All right, like that's so fun to me. Okay, so at this point as well is when I would start looking for anything that might kind of appear. So it's sort of like when you're a kid and you look at the clouds or when you see a face in tree bark or something like that. That's kind of what we're doing here. So like I said, this seems like it could maybe be a fish or an eye. There's also this fun thing where at the right angle, this looks like a nose and a mouth and then eyes. It's upside down, but it's kind of another little thing there. Sometimes if you squint your eyes as well, that will kind of blur things together in an interesting way that can also um, maybe inspire you or help you see things from a different angle to find something interesting. All of this is completely dry. Whatever I add now isn't going to really mix with any of the colors that are down here. We're on our first layer. It was all about mixing with those just to be fun. I'm going to let go of the eye and continue painting and just see what it brings me. I think it's important to demonstrate that, you know, you can certainly get attached to to things and develop them out. But also just because you kind of notice something in a piece, it doesn't mean that you have to follow that through. You can always just keep playing. And this is a color <laughs> that I rarely use because it's so vibrant that it, it feels overwhelming to me. Even as colorful as my work can get, this feels too much. So I'm blending it with this cream and you can see it helps tone it down a little bit so it's not quite as like in your face royal blue. And maybe it's because this is like my high school color, <laughs> this is like vibrant blue, that I'm just kind of like, oh, that's okay. I don't need that everywhere. I've seen it enough. We were the blue ponies, which is not a very menacing animal. <laughs> All right, so again, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just playing. And I'm just letting these colors blend together in, in interesting ways that, that are fun and, you know, we'll just see where it goes. So I sort of like this, so I'm just kind of making a little box around it. But you can make any shape around it. I'm just kind of, I'm just doing that solely so that I keep a little bit of it for now. Because I do enjoy it. That green and those magentas are fun together. So that's one way you can kind of save bits that you like. And I'm sure you've picked up on this by now, but the more that you mix two colors on the canvas, the more they'll eventually blend into, you know, the median color of the two of them together, as opposed to being that, um, you know, very contrast. 
any color. So I'm bringing in the palette knife here. And I really enjoy it for the different textures you can get with. And whenever you make a row like that, if you want to go over it with like a new layer. That also gives you this automatic dimensionality to your piece. Even if you don't know what necessarily this is or what it would be, it's all just patterns, fun marks. That's all we're doing. I'm enjoying this variation of blue, that the more teal and then the more kind of purpley blue are creating together. I think that's very pretty. Oh, it matches my gloves. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Okay. Let's put some of this over here just because I have it. <laughs> so we'll just get that off my off my fingers there. The other fun thing about this is you can just really use it as um or view it as just trying to use up your paint that you've made. So if you're really not sure where you're going or whatever, just, you know, put out a little bit of paint and then use it all up. And once, you know, once you've used it all, take a step back and take a look at where you are and see, see how you feel about that without trying to think too much about how you're applying it to the canvas. Eventually, if you kind of play with this kind of painting long enough, you'll find that you just get into a flow of it. And it's this very kind of beautiful, relaxed, you know, you're just, you're enjoying whatever you're doing at the moment without really worrying about, you know, what everything is going to be. You're just very focused in, in the now. I'm working with fairly soft bodied paints today. So they're not as liquidy, but if I make my brush super damp, then they just become liquidy because they don't have a choice. And if you see anything, um, you know, as this is going, please feel free to tell me in the comments. I love, I love to know what other people see because it's just, it's just so interesting how different people's eyes are drawn to different things. And, you know, we're all pulling from different reference points of what, you know, what are, are the patterns 
that our minds make to, you know, what sort of imagery is expected. Like I always tend to find a lot of birds in my art. The whole point of painting is you, not the painting. So you should be enjoying the process. That's not to say that there might be parts where you want something to look a certain way and it's kind of challenging. You know, like that's cool, enjoy the challenge of it for sure. But you should never, like you, you should never get so invested that the value um, that a painting provides is solely focused on its end product. So you should be enjoying it and relaxed enough in, in just the paint playing that, you know, that's, you know, that's the fun. I compare it to um, like golf or guitar where so many people do those and they're not planning on being a professional golfer or a professional musician, they just do it for fun. And maybe they're not even particularly good, but they're still just, you know, it's relaxing to them, it's fun, or they just, you know, it's creatively or, um, you know, physically fulfilling in some way. And for some reason we act like, yeah, but if you want to paint, you have to be like good at it to paint. And first of all, so many adults haven't painted in a really long time. So like, if you haven't painted in a really long time, you're probably not gonna be phenomenal. And that's okay, nobody expects that of you. Um, you know, you should do it because you're enjoying, you know, getting, getting your feelings out or enjoying the meditative quality of it or, you know, the playful creativity that it kind of inspires in you. And if eventually you get to a point where, you know, um, this sounds arrogant and I don't mean it that way. I mean, this as in I've spent over 20 years. I mean, my whole life I've been making art, but, you know, focusing professionally on painting for, you know, 20 years. So I'm not being conceited when I, when I say that I'm lucky that I'm at the point now where I feel self-assured and that whatever I'm painting, by the time I get to the end, I can make it something that is is visually fun and visually um, finished and complete and like a whole work of art where it is something on its own. But even so, the whole process for me is only about painting. It's about doing it. And I don't, I don't care what the end thing is. And because of that, I've, I've surprised myself in such beautiful and unusual ways because I was willing to, um, you know, just trust that it'll be what it'll be and I'm good enough at this point that I'll be able to make it something I like. But, you know, that's, that's been years and years, you know, and I think if you just gentle with yourself and respect the fact that you're just getting started, you'll make something amazing. And I think it helps a lot if you just imagine um, somebody else did it. <laughs> we tend to be able to appreciate other people's, um, you know, bravery of, of trying and delving into creativity um, a lot more compassionately than we do to ourselves. So, you know, abstract is, is always something. Right, let's bring some more of this green here.
And it's looking at it from different angles because sometimes, you know, something that looked like, you know, one thing looks different. Or stepping back from it entirely, like leaning up against, oh, leaning it up against a wall and then stepping to the other side of the room or stepping to the other side of the room and squinting your eyes. And that'll kind of show you some different stuff too. I definitely don't have what I would consider a top or bottom yet, but I'm kind of enjoying this angle or this position right now. I'm not sure if that matters and it'll end up as anything, but that's kind of what I'm feeling. So I'm using a high flow acrylic here. And that's what I'm able to get these really delicate lines with. This one's almost empty, so I'm just, I added water and I'm just taking it out of it. But I really, I really recommend this. If you want to do fine line work, this is going to be so much easier for you than a soft body because you're just not starting with as thick of a, of a medium. And you'll see the difference here where this is wet and this is dry. So you get much cleaner lines when you're going on something that's already dry than when it's already wet. <laughs> Little drip buddy. It's kind of fun. And if I want to bring back some of what was underneath there, because the top layer is still wet, I can then come in, get it really wet, and 
can kind of take it off like that. And if you use paper towel, it'll also give you those interesting um, textural, textural elements as well, which can be fun. You can also use the pressure of the pressure of the nozzle to actually kind of like, sort of pressure wash it, I guess. And that will also clear off some of that for you. And then if you go back in and kind of dampen it off and wipe, you can bring back some of that stuff. So it's all just whatever you feel like like doing with it, you know, and there'll be parts that like every <laughs> every piece that I make has kind of an ugly stage where things just kind of look wrong and wonky and you know it just doesn't feel <laughs> feel right or fit quite with you know where I feel like it should be going. And when that happens, I just step away for a little bit. And sometimes that little bit is an evening. And sometimes that little bit is, oh my gosh, I think one was like three, four years <laughs> that I stepped away. But then eventually I do finish and it's always awesome. Like it always turns out great. I just have to let myself step away and release, release my expectations and just, you know, relax into the process again and just refocus on enjoying it. Because usually when I get too caught up in what, what I think it should be or, you know, something like that, I kind of hold myself back. So I've learned to just, you know, step back, relax, and then revisit it. All right, I think we might be close to a stopping point for the second layer. And then we'll let this dry. And we will come back again. And if you, you know, if you're painting along, if you're doing something similar with me um, on your own, awesome. I would love to see how that looks. That's very exciting to me. But also, um, you know, if you're painting and you get to a point like this and you think this is it, I really enjoy it. I think it's great. I'm going to leave it. Then just leave it. But don't leave a painting because you're scared of wrecking it. You should never be scared of your art. You should always... That was the point, I guess, I was trying to make. <laughs> you should never be afraid of your art. Your art is for you. Um, you know, it's something that flows out of you. So you don't, you don't have to be afraid of wrecking it because you're the one who decides what it is anyway. And if you change it, then it was supposed to be changed because you're the creator. So, you know, you just have to learn to trust yourself. There we go. So there's our layer two. Thank you, friends, and take care of yourselves. It's a weird world, so be nice to yourself.